Hi there, Hyperdrive Kittens fans. Uh, this is the third Hyperdrive Kittens history video in a series. Um, the first one being the birth of the Hyperdrive Kittens, the second being the making of the first Hyperdrive Kittens single, Phone Sex Girls, and this one is about the second single, which was on Outpunk Records. Um, Matt Wobensmith's uh, label out of San Francisco. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. Um, it was called Rock and Roll Drag Queen, and I wrote it. And it uh, it's uh, something I have sort of mixed feelings about now. Um, at the time... Um, it was the only song that I sang in the Hyperdrive Kittens that I did the lead singing on. And, uh, and when we did the, uh, the release, um, the controversy was not with the, anything to do with rock and roll drag queen at all. It was with what we proposed as the B side, which was boy raper. And, uh, boy raper in my estimation was a fairly silly little song. Um, about a girl who was self-described as a boy raper. Uh, yeah, girls can't really rape, rape boys. Well, you can, um, but you have to get really creative about it. There's there's things that can be done to force a guy to have an erection against as well. Um, uh, we won't get into that. Uh, but anyway, in general, it's not common for... Uh, females to be able to, you know, actually rape males. Um, but Matt had trouble with that. He was like, well, you know, I don't want to pr uh, promote anything that sounds like rape, and it's, you know, it was, you know, not politically correct, uh, whatever. I never really understood why it would be a problem. I thought it was all tongue-in-cheek and silliness and and uh, just funny. Uh, to this day, Janine still doesn't really want to do Boy Raper and has objections to it. And, you know, I've read, written a bunch of other songs since then, so, you know, I'm not married to the thing. So if she doesn't want to do it, that's fine with me. It's okay. But, yeah, I don't really get the uh, controversy about it. The thing that bothers me, in hindsight, is Rock and Roll Drag Queen and the, and the, and the lyrics of it, because... Um, uh, the lyrics are printed on the inside of the uh, the insert, actually. It's not about a drag queen. It's about a transsexual, and a transsexual is not a drag queen. A drag queen is, you know, as most of us here in the Bay Area know, um, a guy that dresses up like a woman. But not just a woman, but a really exaggerated version of a woman. Uh, a transvestite is somebody who dress, uh, dresses up as a woman and tries, you know, may, may try to pass as a woman. A drag queen is not really a transvestite. A drag queen is a performer. The, uh, the costume and the makeup is designed to be outrageous and exaggerated. And uh, a transsexual is somebody who is neither a, a, a transvestite nor a drag queen, but somebody who's who's I identifying as uh, the female gender uh, while having been born male. And, well, if you're talking uh, male to female transsexual, uh, there's also the other, the other way around, uh, female to male. Um, but this song is about a male to female transsexual. And... They're living as a female every day. They're, they're not, they're not putting it on for a sexual thrill or putting on, putting it on for a performance. It's a, uh, it's their life. So the lyrics are, you know, and the title is rather misguided. And uh, people have asked me to to do the song uh, since the band reformed. I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe. I don't have any objections 
to the music. Um, much of the lyric doesn't bother me, but yeah, that's sort of, it's, it's just confused. And I guess I can be forgiven because I wasn't thinking about it at the time, although I actually, you know, knew better. But I wrote it because certain lines just sang well, rhymed well, and I wasn't too picky about uh, the political ramifications of what I was writing. And uh, these days, it's, it's, it's changed pretty good. Um, so I don't know if you want to hear the... I don't know if you want to hear the lyrics. Here they are. You can't see them because they're backwards. But uh, this is the insert. I met her at the Midnight Creature Feature Picture Show. Um, they left out the word picture here. I don't know why. She looked just like Tracy Lords. Seventh heaven in the seventh row. I definitely have a fixation about Tracy Lords. Um, she blew me a kiss when I passed her. I turned around on my heel and I asked her, and she carved her number on my arm with her stiletto. Uh, that that wouldn't be very comfortable, would it be? Um, she's got the ways and means. She's my one and only dream. She's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Sweet 17, my little rock and roll drag queen. Didn't know she packed a pistol till she'd already stole my heart. Sweet transsexual baby. No ifs, no ands, no buts or maybes. There's no turning back now, because she's already stole my heart. Called her Friday, and she said I'd better pick, pick her up by 7.35. We parked above the lights of the city up on Inspiration Drive. I finally held her and kissed her. So hot I thought our tongues were going to blister. Then I felt something rubbing up against my thigh. She gave me quite a scare, but she's such a beauty I don't care with her double D's and her long blonde hair. Oh, gosh. She drives me so wild, my little transsexual dream child. She, um, she keeps my piston pumping while I shift her into gear. Oh, there's an image for you. We're burning down this city, me and my little rock and roll kitty. Can't refuse her nothing when she's purring in my ear. Uh, sweet 17, da 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 and that's just a... Uh, just a recap of the earlier, I guess that's a chorus. She's already stole my heart. So anyway, that's it. It's you know it's not not not, not all bad, but uh, rather rather colorful. Uh, again, we recorded that at PLH Sound with Bill Lackey, um, and I don't see a credit here for a mastering, which is probably why it sounds absolutely awful. Uh, the listing of the personnel of the band is me, Tigger Latwang, Janine Curtis, Becky Hayes on bass, Sebastian Melmoth on drums. Okay, there was no Sebastian Melmoth. That was, we didn't have a drummer at the time. Um, there was uh, a friend of Becky's named Dave. I forget his last name. Um, and he ended up playing drums with us. He had played in Becky's uh, other band, uh, or the band that Becky was in before, the Hyperdrive Kittens, called Splat. And uh, he was a good drummer, but and he was a good-looking guy, which I think Janine especially appreciated, and, uh, and John Ginoli from Pansy Division also seemed to notice. Um, but he looked like he belonged in... Def Leppard or something. He didn't look like he really fit in with the Hyperdrive Kittens. Um, nice enough guy. I don't know that I ever really connected with him really all that much, but we needed a drummer and he was pretty good. He was more of a metal drummer, though, and as I was uh, talking about in the last video, bands have a tendency to play a little faster than they ought to live. Dave really had that tendency. Uh, when I listen to the band playing live, and you'll see the videos um, from Club Commotion uh, 1993, that's Dave on drums. Wow, we are playing fast. And the lyrics are just going by in a blur. And 
it just loses a lot of its impact and uh, groove going that fast. It just the the music just is just not meant to be that fast, and that was unfortunate. I I wasn't happy with that era uh, because of that, but unfortunately, uh, that that was the only uh, time that very much video was taken of the Hyperdrive Kitten. So there you have it. That's that's the Hyperdrive Kittens from the 90s is there with with Dave. Um, we have two video, uh, well, there's several videos from that concert, but there's two concerts that were videotaped that I have videotapes of. The other one was the Cocodry, I think it was, and um, same lineup, so that was Dave also. Um, there was some other video that was taken at the Paradise Lounge with Liza on bass, so that would have been Don Connor on drums, but I don't know whatever happened to that footage. I don't know why it was filmed. Uh, I don't know how much of it was filmed, but it was um, something I don't think I've ever seen since it happened. I don't know where it is. I'd love to see it. Uh, so let me see. What else? Oh, I wanted to... I, I, I remembered that I had forgotten to mention um, on the last video about Tigger Le Twang. Um, she was my girlfriend. Uh, we were together for five years. Um, and she wasn't in the Hyperdrive Kittens to begin with, even though she and I did get together, I guess in 92, 1992, I guess. And it was, you know, a year or so, or maybe that long before she actually made her way into the band. She wasn't um, a guitar player when I met her. Uh, we originally thought about having her in there as backup singer, but when we tried it out in rehearsal, she really wasn't much of a singer. She couldn't sing on pitch very effectively, so we, shot, we thought we, we better have her do something else besides sing. So I started teaching her how to play the guitar, and although she was never particularly fantastic, she was able to pick it up and play bar chords semi-effectively without without too much training and without too much time elapsing, so we had her play rhythm guitar. Um, and then she... I, I, I worked with her a lot on her singing and uh, working on pitch control and things like that, and then she got um, to where she could sing back up, and so she sang guitar and, and played... Uh, I just sang guitar? Did I say that? She, she played rhythm guitar and sang back up, and then when, uh, when Janine uh, left, then she, she moved into the lead singer position, but it wasn't immediately, it wasn't right away. Um, we did audition other singers and then finally decided, well, we'll just uh, do more working on it and training and have her sing lead. But on the Phone Sex Girls single, I don't think she sang backup. She might have a little bit. I don't know. I don't remember. But she definitely did the voiceovers. Um, she she did the voice acting. So when you hear that that voice singing, uh, saying <laughs> singing, saying um, uh, whatever that uh, you know, uh, I, put me out with your fire hose or whatever like that. That was uh, that was uh, that was uh, Tigger doing that, and that's me with. Janine, I think Janine is playing the the the, the operator, the uh, the credit operator, and I'm some over over enthusiastic guy trying to, you know, get on with the sex part of it before she's taken my credit credit card information and before I've had a call, and so it was that was the other part of that. But anyway, um, on uh, on the rock and roll drag queen single, she's listed. I don't know if she did anything at all. She might have done backing vocals, but the uh, the recording session is confusing to me because I think we must have done two sessions and I don't know which one came first because if this listing is correct, and I think it is that Mandy Colombo played bass on this recording. Mandy Colombo was in the band um, earlier on and kind of briefly... 
and I I just get the feeling that the session where we did Rock and Roll Drag Queen and Addiction was earlier than the session where we did Phone Sex Girls and Lipstick. So, and I know that I played bass on Phone Sex Girls and and, and Lipstick. So, yeah, it's all it's all confusing and jumbled up. Um, what else? So yeah, so when this came out, Maximum Rock and Roll did a review on it that was uh, positive and. A lot of people there put it on their list of, you know, singles that they liked, which was primarily, I think, because Matt was associated with Maximum Rock and Roll, and they knew him and were supportive of him, and so even even though they sort of panned our first single, they they acted like this one was good, even though it sounded pretty pretty ragged. Um, but anyway, it's it's the one that everybody seems to want to try to find. Uh, it's the one that seems to be the most valuable of the two vinyl releases. Um, this is the front cover. I'm sorry that it's backwards. Let's see if I can put it out there for you to see. See that? Can you see that? And that's um, that's Watts, our friend Watts there, here, the one in drag. And this is Jeff down here, um, I guess, servicing him. That's in a adult bookstore in San Francisco somewhere. And this is the old logo that John C. Berry from the Psychotic Pineapple did. And then on the back, we have Jeff and Watts again, but this is Jeff in drag, and that's Watts not in drag. Um, what was funny about... And I, I took both of those photographs. What was funny about this was right after doing this uh, photo session with, with Jeff and Watts, with Watts and Drag, um, we went out to a cafe nearby and there were some bitchy drag queens there that were looking at Watts disparagingly and making rude comments because the boy had not bothered to tuck his man tackle. And that apparently was... Uh, something not done little did I know you know but uh anyway um this picture on the back cover was taken in the bathroom of the Eagle Club which is sort of a leather bar in uh San Francisco and so uh, yeah what else can be said about this I don't remember there being a record release party for a rock and roll drag queen Hmm. So Sebastian Melmoth was just a name, uh, but Don Connor is credited as, as playing drums on this. So that he was just credited. Sebastian Melmoth and Becky Hayes were just credited as being in the band at the time of the release. But Don Connor and Mandy Colombo were credited as playing drums and bass. Sebastian Melmoth is just the the alias of Oscar Wilde when he was living in Paris after his incarceration. Um, and, you know, I'm an Oscar Wilde fan, so that was my cryptic little nod to, to Oscar Wilde. Uh, Addiction was the other side um, of this, and it was because Matt wouldn't put out Boy Raper. Addiction was the first song that me and uh, Janine ever wrote, and I don't think we wrote another song together until the kittens got back together uh, recently, and then we wrote Roommate Hell together. So that seems to be the, the tradition. The minute uh, we get together, we immediately write one song. Um, so Janine came to me with that song. I, I think I've talked about it uh, before, but maybe not in interviews. Um, yeah, it was the first thing we ever wrote. Yeah, I mentioned that in the first video. I'm sure I must have. But she had a, a friend named, what was her name? Jill? I forget. Her name, her last name was Dodgson, and she's credited on uh, on addiction as well, a writer's credit because I think she and Janine were uh, working on the lyrics, which I extensively re rewrote. And uh, yeah, I like addiction, so I'm glad there's a there's a recording of it. Uh, too bad it isn't mastered better, but uh, there you have it. Um, guess that's it. <laughs>